can record. Now recording starts. Sorry for the changes in any sometimes. I may not be able to finish today. We'll see. Uh, anyway, don't worry. In case um, if you can't finish it, I will take maybe some time from Diane and the sir next week and finish it. Anyway, we have to clarify the issues. I hope now Fiabalib is clear to you and the current cost. I just told you more or less the same. But in ascertaining the current cost, there may be some other additional aspects to be considered. For instance, in the case of um, replacement cost. So what would be the additional cost that you have to make in that regard? In the case of um, ascertaining the net realizable value, that is also current cost. But you take the market price and deduct the any expenses incurred in making such efforts in the future. Some additional items may come in. Um, I, I hope the idea is clear to you. Therefore, these different names have been given looking at the different situation and different context and how the value is ascertained. But under these four bases, we derive only one thing, that is the current value. So therefore, technically, there cannot be significant differences among these things. But the difference is the way in which we arrive the value. Is that clear? If markets are really efficient, transparent, and um, so no matter from which item is used, ultimately it should be more than the same. If you see the significant differences, that mean some issues are there in the market. Is that clear to the one who asked the question? Is that clear to you? Okay, if not, please ask. Now, um, I was somewhere here, recommended you to uh, read this act and the Finance Act. Then the listing requirements, you better check. So interesting things are there about uh, um, the listing procedure. Companies cannot be listed on their own. Uh, they have to comply with all these uh, listing requirements. But nevertheless, you may observe some important thing like uh, exceptional things during coming months, maybe a couple of months time, you would see lots of IPOs, initial public offerings, because government has given um, some tax benefits to companies, those who want to those who are listed on the Columbus Stock Exchange before 31st March 2021. In order to get these benefits, tax benefits, and at the same time, if the companies have a need of um, expanding its financing basis or the possibilities of borrowing money or just uh, accessing to more finance, of course, there is a great chance that you would see many IPOs in the future. Other statutory requirements, legal requirement, Banking Act, Finance Act, Insurance Industry, likewise, even new things would come. Even we can add, I forgot, um, a Colombo Port City Bill is also a kind of um, regulation, but they are not applicable for the companies operate within the jurisdiction, um, the Sri Lankan jurisdiction, uh, other than the area specified in the Colombo Port City. So, Accounting and Auditing Standard Act is the main one which would be applicable for us. It says Accounting and Auditing Standard Act, Act should be um, adhered by who? Specific, it should be specified. Specified business enterprises. Specified business enterprises. Enterprises which have been specified. That has been given um, in the act. I did not uh, take the list here. Uh, it includes specified business enterprises, includes limited liability companies, trust, corporations, some uh, 
public entities, universities, likewise. So there are so many you can go through it. It has introduced the following committees um, according to the accounting and standard, uh, sorry, auditing, accounting and auditing standard act. It has to be um, really put into practice. The standards are required to be pronounced. The power has been given to CA Sri Lanka. So CA Sri Lanka is the entity which deals with accounting and auditing standards. If they want to pronounce new one, new standards should be prepared in accordance with the procedure given. After that, that has to be enacted in the parliament. So number one, accounting standard committee. Committee is required. Committee make recommendations and otherwise SECA Sri Lanka in the adoption of accounting standards. So CA members are there, government representatives, maybe composition uh, might represent different parties. It takes into account, for example, in the future, it is more likely that we need to have a particular accounting standard to deal with digital currencies. We'll see how new standard would come in. Then auditing um, standard committee. For the auditing purposes, to follow the same procedure, there is a separate committee. And there is another body uh, recommended, uh, established under this act is called SLAS MB, Sri Lanka Accounting and Auditing Standard Monitoring Board. This monitoring board's uh, um, job task is to monitor, oversee whether specified enterprises, business enterprises are complying with accounting standards. There are some um, famous cases, litigations are there. That means there are instances where specified business enterprises have not followed um, accounting standards or instances where the application of accounting standard, the, the way uh, it, it has been applied can be challenged by slash MB. Um, th that is the reason why they have challenged those things in the court. Good example is Touchwood um, Investment uh, PLC. I think uh, slash MB uh, won the case, but in other cases, maybe ETA, I trust and other cases do not know the end result, but better be in touch. Companies Act has several provisions about um, minimum reporting requirement, maintenance of accounts and all those things. I'm not going to read out each and every point, but each and every point refers to something or some ways or some ways or uh, uh, actions with the weave to protect the public interest, to serve the general public, to protect the interest of stakeholders. It should not leave any room there <laughs> for a tiny group of people to um, uh, engage in action that would be detrimental to many. That is the idea. Banking Act um, specifies recent requirements um, for banking and financial institutions. Um, I'm not going to uh, detail them out, but uh, refer to the section 28 of the, uh, the monetary board um, that may specify uh, the form, the balance sheet and the profit or loss account like the monetary board, uh, which, is, which has been established under the central bank has some powers uh, to deal with how best banking and financial institutions provide information. So they are there to protect the best interest of the country and assure the, ensure the um, financial sta stability of the country um, and financial discipline of the country. This is how it, it is being done. Now we will come to, <clears throat> Someone. So someone has just drawn lines. Just one minute. Uh, 
share it again. Please don't uh, draw anything. Uh, Corporate governance, you will learn this subject in other subjects as well, maybe as a separate section. Simply speaking, always keep it in mind that corporate refers to any kind of entity where there is an agency. That means collective efforts are being taken place, but decisions are being taken and made by handful of people. So good example is the limited liability company that is why it is called corporate, right? Why we manage together. Why it is called a corporate. Limited liability is called a corporate. Why? Thousand people may have invested their money. The corporation is there. Therefore, it has to be managed in that way, cooperatively, together. But practically, thousand owners cannot take part in the management. That's the reality. Then we appoint someone. Agency is created so that issue may arise. And 10 people are going to manage the wealth of 100 or 1,000, 10,000. Of course, problem arises, like in the case of government. So, this country is ours. Sri Lanka is not given to political party or selected people. So that is for the citizen of this particular this country. Therefore, we have to govern, we have to rule the country together according to our wishes, our aims, our desires, our expectation, anticipations, all those things should be ours. We discuss together collectively, democratically and decide. 22 million, how do you do this thing? By using WhatsApp, Facebook, or any other modes of communication? How? It is extremely difficult uh, if you try to collectively govern the country in that way. That is why you need to have mechanism. Judiciary is set up, uh, government is set up, and different other administrative uh, structures are set up, whereby we send the uh, uh, send some agents there. Therefore, the local authorities, provincial council, government, lot of the public institutions, private entities. So agency is there. I'm, I've just explained you a very broader picture. As long as there is an agency, agency creates a problem of serving the few at the expense of many. How are we going to solve this problem? Not that easy, but we try our level best to establish well accepted, globally accepted governance mechanism. That is how and why the term corporate governance came in. How a company is governed, directed, managed without harming anybody. The good governance concept, e-governance, corporate governance. So governance refer, refers to how best something is managed where there is an agency. If there is no agency, need not to worry about governance. You think of yourself. Always, if you work like to behave as an individual, you are subject to be governance Why you live in Sri Lankan society. Therefore, you are abided by the rules and regulations of this country you need to respect. If you do not want to be governed or to uh, interact with the governance, then you need to go to a separate place, a particular island, like the case of Robinson Crusoe. Only you live there. You have your own fantasy. You live, no one comes and rules. So that is the situation. But even ruling and governing sometimes automated governance can happen in future sometimes. Some um, nice concepts are, are being discussed. Um, one of those guys um, is, um, I think I just uh, talked about that guy. 
Noam Chomsky is one of the philosophers. He talks about a nice concept. It is called um, anarchical syndicalism. Hmm? Anarchical syndicalism. I do not know it. Um, Cindy. I'm not sure whether I have correctly spelled this. This is the concept. He argues that uh, this world will not be a better place for human to live in peace and harmony as long as there are governments, as long as there are states or the governments to rule us. But it would take some time, but his idea is um, somewhere down the line, maybe I do not know. His wish is something like uh, the world would be really, people can live in peace and harmony if we can establish anarchical syndicates, no rulers, no bosses, no, no one to direct or you, principles, guidelines, procedure systems are there, but no rulers. Anyway, coming back to the question, governance deal with therefore agency, therefore whoever who have, holds power and engage must be identified with respective responsibilities. Hmm? And responsibility should go along with the accountability. To great extent, what is missing in Sri Lankan society is this accountability. Very difficult to hold people accountable. So misuse of funds, swindling, corruption, and theft, so many things are there. And any those guys can easily escape. If you look at the last week news, most of the cases where food stars and many people who have uh, lots of issues and pending cases were withdrawn by the Attorney General Department. Attorney General Department sued the companies and individuals saying that they have done lots of bad things. Now the same department withdraws case. So it is really a job. And the avant-garde case is a good example, right? So avant-garde was accused of um, um, engaging in uh, some actions uh, by using a uh, floating armory and all those things with the help of the government. But finally, the Attorney General Department withdrew the case. So the joke of the day is not that, but uh, yesterday a particular committee, presidential commission was appointed to have one country, one law, headed by one of the Buddhist monks, famous Buddhist monk. He's been accused because he, he has been in jail for the complication of, uh, complication of the court for some months uh, based on the presidential pardon, he was released. But that guy is the chairman of this committee. And he, that is not his expertise, the legal, it was one country, one law. So you need to think of the legal aspects, I don't know. But these things happen. So that means these are the wishes of the general public. The public accepts these things to great extent, to some extent, anyway. Uh, therefore, if that happens, you can't talk about accountability for sure. Checks and balances are there. Accountability, how the accountability is being established, checks and balances should be there. How? External audit is checks and balances. Some compliance requirements are checks and balances. Securities Exchange Commission, checks and balances. Independent inquiries, checks and balances, something like that. And the entire agency structure is explained here, actually why governance matters only because there are agencies. When there is an agency concept, um, of course, in a limited liability company agency is there, who holds the power? Managers. Managers, actually this, these guys are the guys who have the power. Therefore, it is more likely that they will do the bad things. They will engage in maximizing their own profits, conflicts. So shareholders will appoint these guys, directors, to manage this or oversee what these guys are doing. 
But what happens? Some directors, together with managers, do the same thing. Problems are there. And to support them, out of all the shareholders, one or two big shareholders join hands with the directors. Then the directors join hands with the managers. They engage in um, some actions whereby they earn lots of money. So these other stakeholders do not have any say. They are helpless and innocent. So theoretically, in order to avoid, like, minimize these conflicts, we appoint, we talk about governance structure, rules, regulation, principles. So whereby we talk about the role and rights of shareholders, other stakeholders, control in directors, separation of uh, the role of uh, um, chairman and the CEO and transparency, accountability, and all those things are discussed and arrange, but all the time what we hear, the bad consequences not the best. In one day, if you want to have uh, transparent and accountable actions or corporate actions and governance in the future, this can happen only under a kind of a political structure that also wants to have that. That is one thing, the political desire and the political ideology is really important. Apart from the political ideology, um, from the physical side, there is one important condition apart from the others. That important condition is nothing but the technology. If you go for full time, like online, real time information system to be shared by everyone, all the citizens are connected to such systems through the technology, the, in, uh, the transparency can be established. Only under such a system, the society would be really fair and good for the mankind. And um, I think already three o'clock. So therefore, I think um, I have to stop at that point. Um, I could not talk about accounting standards setting process. So I completed the conceptual framework and up to the governance. So accounting standard setting process is a little bit mechanical. I'll discuss with uh, Diana and the sir, either him to talk about this, or I will take maybe 10, 15 minutes time to talk about this thing. But what you have to be concerned about the accounting standard setting process is nothing but how it evolved and how it has been evolving and why do we know why do we know want to know about it important because the accounting standard setting process is uh, procedural it is happening physically happening but that is what we see there are lots of things uh, politics uh, um, uh, kind of institutionalized practices influences so many things are there, ideological, uh, ideological arguments. So many things are there in the accounting standard setting process. So our objective is to discuss both the physical aspects of the accounting standard setting process, how it has evolved and established up to the present level and other aspects, sociological, political, and other uh, involvements are also discussed a little bit. So this is the idea. Anyhow, for today, I have to stop now. It is at three o'clock. But um, um, I'm so sorry due to some technical uh, problems. Uh, we have to sacrifice some more time. Nevertheless, if you have any question up to this particular point, the governor's structure, now you may ask any question. Are there any questions? <laughs> so uh, I have a question. Do we need to be thorough on the insights of corporate governance structure? Ah, OK, good question. Actually, when I teach, and my task is to facilitate for you to learn from that particular objective. If you want to enhance your knowledge, 
enhance your learning, you inquire about these things, governance, and so take examples from the society, not to buy hard these principles or points stated in these things. Read and ask why, how, and all those. Always ask these two questions, how and why. You would find lots of things. That is for learning. But for the exam, if you ask the question specifically for your examination purposes, need not to be that too much thorough, need not to grasp additional knowledge. So you can just look the areas about the competencies, what you are supposed to do. As long as you have that, then it, that serves the purpose of examination. But my vision and objective is not only to do that, but also to push you to a little bit ahead from that level and leaving you there on that platform. It is up to you to decide whether you should just go further or not, because the world and the education knowledge here is for us to uh, inquire the world, question the world and analyze the world from an, from an enlightenment perspective and not to be mechanically, mechanistically trained for a given job. That's not the purpose of a university. So that is the idea. Um, yeah, that, that, that's it. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. it's okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Always question. Don't believe in things. That, that is the key to success. Are there any other questions? Do you believe in gods? Actually, we don't know, right? So better not to believe and better not to disbelieve. So sometimes religious things would be there. I'm just telling you just to distinguish the difference of this uh, believing dimensions. Believing may come from different sources, culture, religion, and all these things. But in the co intellectual course, knowing course should not believe in. You should be able to question, is that true? How, if it is true, how and why? If you keep on asking these questions, that is the path for enlightenment. Any other questions? I do not see any other questions in the uh, chat box even. Mm. So that we will end uh, today's session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. See you next week on Wednesday at 3 p.m and um, I will upload some material have been already uploaded. Please read basically your chapter uh, readings and additional reading. So there is no limited like restriction for reading read as much as possible, but the relevant things um, don't read unnecessary stuff, then, then you are all right. So thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.